That doesn't sound like KJ at all. Oh, that's so funny. They didn't want to be. Some people are just really predictable. In fact, KJ is one of them. Sebastian, did you choose the name Sebastian from Wallowin? No, I did a name generator and that came up. And I was like, all right. So I don't know how I'm going to get back there to get what I want to get out of my closet. Children. Is the video on? Children. Yeah. <laughs> the video's a new yes. Yeah. I'm not at it. It's a game. No, that's not Come on. hard. Come on. Is it? Is it? Oh. What is it? No. <laughs> Jumper. You know they're trying to pass, <laughs> oh. trying to pass a bill now where Has it already happened? people can... Uh, Probably. Use, I mean, the line has it already on the way. Wait, what happened? I mean, they're, the trying, they're, they're trying to pass Mom, a bill in Iowa that, in Iowa that Christians can refuse to serve gay and lesbian people. Did you say a word? Where did this happen? Hey. Um, I'll show you this. Okay. Did I tell you last time that I left this out? I'm, and Titus scraped it off. Titus is like scratching it all off. That's horrible. Okay. okay. Continuing to talk about solids. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about this idea known as a crystal lattice. Uh, I feel like I've said that one. I feel like it's yeah. definitely been said is that ice cream five cream? times in my life. Really? Yeah. As well, as well. Okay. Do you think yeah, the, it would be cost. Okay, so if I, if I said, if I asked you to just define it without looking, could you do it? Yeah, it's a 3D structure. A rook of one box. So or, or, all right, is it always ionic? Uh, uh, no. Yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm probably always ionic. Yeah, I think about it. Never mind. Have well, you seen that video? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like such like, 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 yes. like, Yeah, yeah. I'm, there's just something else that is very similar to it. That's why. Right. Anyway, so here we go. Let's talk about crystal lattice. Can we focus, please, guys? Okay. Um, so what what a crystal lattice is is it is the the, uh, the structure of an ionic compound essentially when it's in solid form. Okay. Now, it says it is a repeating three-dimensional pattern. Boy, repeating. So what type of solid do you think we're talking about? Crystalline. Crystalline. Why? It's called a crystal lattice. Okay? And then underneath here it says, here's how we get this 3D-dimensional structure, or how, or some things that will affect what that three-dimensional structure will look like. Okay? It says it depends on the number and kinds of particles involved. Let me give you an example of how the number or kinds of particles involved would give you a different structure. Okay. If you look at the ion ratio here, we have a 1 to 1 ion ratio and a 1 to 2 ion ratio. Are their structures going to look exactly the same? No, they won't. That's what a 1 to 1 ion ratio will look like. Okay. A one to two ion ratio, you would have to have two of one for every one of the other. Those te technically look more like a diamond shape than they will look like a, a, a square shape. Okay? Now, another thing, and I could give another example of if it had the same ratio, like if I were talking about LIF. Even though they're both a one to one ratio, do these all these particular atoms, do they have the same ion size? Same amount of electrons. So even that, you would say they would have a little bit different structure even though they have the same ratio. They'd have the same general shape, but there would be some differences. Bond lengths, bond energies, things like that. Okay? Another thing that plays a part, charges of the ions. This should make sense. Like if I've got an ACL, that's a one plus and a one minus, correct? Right? Quick little review there from a couple yeah. chapters ago. And then, let's say I got something like this, still a one-to-one -one ratio, but the charges are two plus and two minus. What's the main significant difference between this? What, what, what effect will that have? Uh, they have the same ratio, 
what, what, what would the difference in charge, what would be the main uh, main effect that the difference in charge would have on stronger volume? Yeah. Right? You'd have, you'd have a structure that was held tighter. Right? Still have the same general shape, but if I were to try to break the bonds of this versus break the bonds of this, which do you think would be easier to break? The first one. Wait, did you say MGO? <laughs> you answered the question. Then. Uh, yes, it's going to be the NaCl because it has a smaller charge, easier to break. Okay. So, if a crystal lattice is a repeatable, organized structure, couldn't we break it down into its simplest repeatable pattern? That's what a unit cell is. Right? So let's say this could be an example of a unit cell of the bigger structure that is a, 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 a salt. The bigger crystal lattice would be the, the whole structure. This maybe would be the unit cell of that. And I can continue to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it to get the overall big structure. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what I'm about to show you on this next slide. Um, so they're just showing you, there's your repeatable pattern as you get to a bigger, uh, get to the bigger structure. I will state that each of these little spherical locations here, um, you might want to maybe write this in. Those are called your lattice points. Oh, it's in the bottom. I'm trying to define what a lattice point is. Because here's what a lattice point is. Um, when we're talking about an ionic compound, ions would be there. But if we're talking about a covalent compound, molecules would be at those points. If I'm talking about a metallic compound, metals would be at those points. Does that make sense? We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the types of crystalline solids that we have. But you might want to get in that um, the locations that make up your unit cell or your lattice points. Um, next bunch of slides that we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you. I do not want you, don't worry about writing it in your notes. Don't even necessarily worry about like trying to remember all of them. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, here's, here's what I want out of this. I'm just going to show you uh, some of the different types of unit cells that you would get. Here's the type of question I'll ask you on a test. This isn't like an overly, you know, really important concept that we, that I'm really, really wanting you to necessarily know. I'm just kind of giving you uh, what they look like. Um, so what type of question you might see regarding this on a, on a test or a quiz might be a multiple choice question that says which one of these four is not, you know, one of types. So am I asking you to memorize it? Not really. Okay. And the reason why is are we gonna are we gonna necessarily uh, need this for the future? No. This is just kind of some basic stuff here that I'm throwing at you. And some of them are pretty fun to say. <laughs> Tetragonal. So fun. Rhombohedral. That's a fun one to say. Rhombohedral. A lot of it, not a lot of it. A lot of these are going to look very similar. It's just how they're oriented. That top one kind of looks more like a diamond, which if you took a rectangle or a, or a square, you could, you could or orient it that it would look kind of like a diamond. Hexagonal, a little more complex. Orthorhombic. Why does that look the same? Well, they're probably very similar. Okay. So I'm not gonna spend too much time just giving me, giving you guys some uh, ideas of what these look like. Okay. On to the next thing here. I want, I'd like to get done a little bit earlier today, so hopefully you can maybe a little time to do some more. I know some of you have been gone. Okay. Uh, but but again, uh, so polymorphous. Here's what's uh, here's what I want you to know about polymorphous. 
what can happen is crystalline solids tend to be your nice order, that they, they tend to be, if we're talking about ionic, really, really strong. Um, so there are some uh, solids that actually can have different solid forms based on their temperature. What I mean by that is, uh, at a low temperature, it might have one type of solid structure, and then at a higher temperature, it might have a different type of solid structure. So they're not exactly the same. Still solids, but their crystals aren't the same. Their crystal lattice or their structure. When they have multiple forms of solid, solid forms that they can have, we call it this. We call it a poly polymorphous, or we would say each of those form is, forms is called a polymorph. Think of it, think, maybe this might help, um, just think of it as like more, being able to morph. What does that mean? Change, Change right? <coughs> what was that? Metamorphosis. Okay, so what this symbol is talking about is if I have either an element or a compound that when it's in its solid form can have multiple forms, we would call, we would say it has, uh, it's polymorphous or each of those forms is called a polymorph. Another vocab word here, allotrope, allotropic. What's the difference? Element. Just an element. So are all polymorphs allotropes? No, but all allotropes But all allotropes are polymorphs. Everybody understand that? So not all polymorphs are allotropes, but all allotropes are polymorphs. Why? Polymorphs. Polymorph has both element and compound, and allotrope is just element. So it's not even both? Because it's just carbon? Yep. Should be. Yep. All right. Lattice energy. Okay. So we're hearing this lattice word a lot. We just talked about crystal lattice, which was the what? What do we say crystal lattice was? Structure. Crystal lattice and structure. Hey, hey, why don't everybody stand up? Everybody stand up. Woo. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I realize I'm doing a lot of just vocab. Yeah, this is really yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I realize this is a lot of vocab. It's probably not your most favorite thing. But let me tell you this. Okay? This chapter. I know last chapter you probably weren't super thrilled with your grade on the last <laughs> test. Okay? This this test is in the future has been equally as hard. Oh, good. Not because it's more difficult material, but because it's almost 100% vocab. I like vocab. That's good. Yeah, I, like I hate vocab. that. Okay? Well, the reason why I say this is 100% vocab where you're not really super engaged in class and you don't think you have to study that much for it. It's more people do bad on this test because they don't think they have to study very much for it. And it's all vocab more than it is more difficult. Okay, so I'm getting you up. Just I know, I understand, I get it. I, I've been in classes where it's you know there are some days that are more enjoyable. Than, I get it. Okay, so if you have to do a little jumping jack, do it. I know some of you've been gone a lot. You've been singing all the time. Let's finish early. There we go. Well, I don't want you to be not not paying attention. Okay, have a seat. Let's, let's finish. So here's what lattice energy is. Okay, lattice energy is essentially the amount of energy that is given off to form your crystal lattice, which is your what? Structure. Structure. Okay. Now it says the energy releases release when gaseous particles form the crystal. So we have gaseous ions. Let's just say I've got Na plus and Cl minus in the gas form. Does that have high energy or low energy? High. High energy. Okay. When those gaseous ions form a crystal lattice, or they're solid, they go from real high energy to real low energy. So where does the energy go? Into the lattice. Into the lattice. It's, well, it's just released. It's released. Oh, that's not good. Okay? Like if, I got, if I have high energy and I form something that's low energy, I went from high to low, that energy had to have been released or gotten rid of. Okay? I know, remember, that we've talked about stability. Stability means what? Uh, equilibrium. No, wait, no. 
From an energy standpoint, low energy, right? Stability means low energy. And here's the thing that most students have tr trouble wrapping their mind around. Low energy means strong bonds. High energy means weak bonds. Okay? So a strong bond with low energy takes a lot of energy to break. That's why you can get from low to high when you break a strong bond. Yeah, I mean, they, their desire is to have low energy. Yeah, that's, that's their desire. Yep. So, lattice energy is the energy needed to go from gaseous ion form down to your crystal structure, which we call the crystal lattice, and that energy gets absorbed or released? Released. So if I were to go from the solid state back to the gas state, I would be absorbing that much energy equal and opposite to the lattice energy. Can you absorb energy? I mean, you do it every time you walk outside, the sun beats on you. Here you go. Nice. Every time you get a nice jab on the arm. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you absorbing energy? Just... What? Aren't you absorbing energy? Right there. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Hey, can I... Uh, Make your face absorb energy? <laughs> so, here are some factors that affect the strength of a crystal lattice. Right? So, we have like three factors that affected what the structure would look like. Once we have the structure, here are the factors that affect how strong that structure is. Because you're going to look up here and you're going to say, that's very similar to what the other ones were, right? that we just talked about, the, the factors that affect the structure, these are the factors that affect the strength of that structure. Very similar. Wouldn't the charge play a big part in how strong the structure is held together? Yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. Wouldn't the size of the particles, how far away they are from each other, or how close they are to each other, wouldn't that affect how strong they're going to be held together? We talked about how when they're closer, they're typically going to be stronger bonds. When they're further away, they're typically going to be weaker bonds. And lastly, the structure itself is going to play a part in whether it's strong. Some structures are, are stronger than others. Okay? The way they are arranged, the way they are packed, has an impact on the strength of the particular structure itself. Last thing. So what we have is we have two types of solids. What are they? Oh, they are. I've ordered a Come on now. Relax. Grab the stool. I think I need to do that. Otherwise, in, the, in that desk, there's that thing behind me. I lean on it, and then I start going to sleep. I understand. Then there are five types of your crystal lab, or crystalline solids. Yeah, your your first type is your atomic. Okay. Now. The reason why I specifically talked about lattice points earlier is because each of these guys are going to have different things at their lattice points. Atomic would be you just have atoms that are bonded to each other to form, like for example, I could have solid argon. Okay? Typically, you're not going to see atoms just hanging out by themselves, but argon can be a possibility. Why? Yeah, it's already stable, right? It doesn't need to bond, it's already stable. And so that's why the noble gases are really the only ones you're probably ever going to see just hanging out by themselves. Right? What you have then, if I were to go back quite a ways, a ways, these lattice points here are going to be where your argon atoms are. 
right? For each of these five different crystalline solids, we're gonna have a different type of thing at those lattice points, okay? So, <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't. You, can't say. you can't say that. You're on camera. <laughs> what? what did you say? I just said it all. What? Oh my god. Okay, okay. me and Rachel are thinking. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. Come on. <laughs> right. You guys are awful. You guys are awful. No, they made it awful. No, no, you said I don't like that sound. The human heart is awful. The human heart is deceitful and wicked. Who can know it? Amen. All right. So, what you have, we didn't say it. first type is if you just have specifically atoms at the lattice point, and those atoms are going to mostly be your noble gases because those are the only ones that are stable enough to just be in their atom form. Okay? Second type is covalent molecular. These are most or anything that's covalent. So, give me an example of a covalent thing. Uh, C. Uh, Wait, what? This is like... Is that what that is? That's different. What? <laughs> is, is C4 like... Ah! I don't know if C4 is actually C2H4. Oh. C2H4. Oh. I mean, I was thinking like water, I or like sugar. I mean, sure. Oh. No, 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 Okay, yeah, you're right. C2H4, that would be fine. I wouldn't call C4 because that's actually going to have a different name. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but, so, if we're talking about water molecules, if we're talking about the sugar molecules, your lattice points, we would have a water molecule. Or your lattice points would have a sugar molecule. Or your lattice points would have this other kind of molecule. And what do you think holds those molecules in that crystalline solid? Hydrogen bond. Depends on what it is, right? If it's H2O, it's hydrogen bond. If it's C2H4, it's going to be dispersion. If it's going to be HCl, it'll be dipole dipole. Like we've talked about, the three types of intermolecular force that we have already described and discussed so far. Okay? That'd be good. Yes. I made a smiling face. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was you. I like just saw that appear. It was so weird. I don't think it. I think it just appeared. I made that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you good? <laughs> what happened? I seriously made that. No, I you went there and wrote it. I, I went up there and I just wasn't watching. That's a really good smiley face. Yeah, That's it a good is. Smiley face. Good job, Kramer. Great smiley face. <laughs> Holy cow. This is a fun video. Nah, uh. I didn't. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I, I went up there and I just. Yeah. No reason. Okay. <laughs> that, that was not better. <laughs> what did I do that? <laughs> you were really good. You must have made a four point or something. You're happy today. Because <laughs> you were. Go out. back and watch the video. I, I, okay, that's proof, all right, you're right. No. What was I talking about? No, no when you made it stand up, you were like, be happy. I did? Yeah. yeah. Oh. What? I thought it was before that. No. 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 Well, it was right around that time, at least. What a mystery this morning. Wow. Is there an investigation? It was. Uh, the video is approved. Don't look back at the video because then you'll see my sister. Oh my gosh, I'm a genius. I actually wasn't watching you. Are you, um, what's his name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How are you like, Ashley? <laughs> Just make people draw a sign. Well, Luigi does not. We're going to start a crime scene. Okay. Listen. Oh. Let me finish. I think this is the last slide. Okay. The other three types, um, the last two are pretty easy, so let's just start with those ones. You suck. Your ionic. <laughs> your ionic. <laughs> I, okay. I really don't remember doing the first one. That's weird, dude. Uh, I wonder why. Ionic crystals. <laughs> what? I wonder why. Ionic crystals are going hard. to be, you have your ions at the crystal lattices. Or your lattice points, and so you just got. This would be an example. Like this would be, uh, I don't know, chlorine. This would be like this would be sodium. This would be chlorine. This would be sodium chlorine, and that would be what you would have in your lattice points. You'd have your ions in your, your lattice points. For metallic crystals, they're typically going to have metals 
at your lattice points. The last one here, covalent network, is kind of a goofy type. Okay. Um, they say it's like a large, like a giant molecule, but it's actually, to me, I think it more uh, covalent network more looks like a ionic molecule, but with a nonmetal. So an example of a network covalent is diamond. It's all carbon. It's all carbon. Now, it do, there are some other things. The, the, the two typical culprits of network covalent are when it has carbon in it or when it has silicon in it. And it makes sense. Those have some very similar properties in that they have how many valence electrons? Four. Four. Okay. Now, usually you'll see silicon with like oxygen. Um, that's the type of thing that could have, that could form these large mega structures. The reason why they call them large giant molecules is like H2O, you know, that's small, right? And H2O is small, but these guys almost have a structure very similar to ionic where it's these huge grains of particles. Right? So we have five here. All of them are types of crystals, crystalline solids. We don't have any type, we're not going to talk about any of the amorphous types. Okay, so your homework, if I ask you, if you had iron, what type of crystal solid would it form? What would you say? Of the five, what type? Metallic. Metallic. If I had, if I said, Neon, what type would it, would it form? Right. Oh, wait, the, 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 the network form. Uh, no, the oh, yeah. Atomic. Oh. Okay, if I said sugar, it would be covalent. If I said calcium chloride, it would be ionic. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Tons of extra time for it. <laughs> 